Right, okay. We were just testing the audio, but it seems like maybe we're okay. So we will begin. So welcome to the Mission X Cook Along training. We'll be broadcasting for around the next 30 minutes, and this will be available afterwards online for you to watch back at any time. I'm Tom, and I work as the Teacher Fellow for the European Space Education Resources Office, which is Ezra UK, and we run Mission X on behalf of the UK Space Agency. Hello, I'm Dave. I work as the Computing Specialist for Ezero and STEM Learning. Over the next half an hour or so, Tom and I will be taking you through some of the science activities from Mission X Train Like an Astronaut and giving you some tips as to how you can extend these activities in the classroom. Also, meet Alex. Say hello, Alex. Hello. He's the Ezro UK manager and he'll be on the chat function on YouTube to respond to your queries and pass on some of your questions live for us to answer. Whilst we assess with the first activity, please introduce yourselves using the chat function, uh, tell us your name and your team name. In addition to the science activities that we will show you today, I've also produced a short webinar that gives new team leaders some advice as to how to access information on submitting points on the Train Like an Astronaut website. This video will also be available from our site, the UK Mission X site, and will be linked out from this video after we have finished the broadcast and edited. Okay, we have five different activities we will guide you through today. Four are linked to existing science activities, and one is linked to a physical activity on the Train Like an Astronaut website. <coughs> the activities are linked to taste in space, living bone strong bones, energy of an astronaut, hydration station, and base station walkabout. You will have received an email that gives you a suggested shopping list for the science activities so that you can try them out alongside us. Please send us some comments on the chat as you cook along with us. The points rubric for the science activities contains sections on hypothesis, safety rules, data and conclusion, space understanding and teamwork. You should encourage your students to make their own predictions and come to their own conclusions. The first investigation is linked to the Living Bones, Strong Bones activity. When in orbit on the International Space Station, astronauts are in free fall. This means that bones and muscles are not having to work against gravity as they are on Earth. Over time, bones of astronauts will lose mass and weaken. Without daily resistance exercises, astronauts can lose so much bone density over a long duration mission that they're in danger of breaking bones more easily when they return to the Earth. The Living Bones, Strong Bones activity on the website talks about students making different models of bone using index card and testing the model bones to destruction with increasing weight. We're going to show you a variation on this, this activity which involves using spaghetti as a model for bones. Now what I've got here you can see this is the existing uh, activity on the Mission X website. Well, I've just used kitchen roll for this and stuffed it for some paper so you can obviously use different models using paper for that. And what we've also got here is our, is our spaghetti activity. So bone is, is not solid calcium but it's constantly changing living tissue. And Dave's just gonna try and show you a, a bit of lamb bone that we've got there. Uh, you can see some structure there in the bone. And if you have your own bones that you, you get for the classroom, you can see it's not completely solid, it's some, some porosity in its nature, it's got some little holes in it. Now what we're gonna do for this activity, we've, we've got some spaghetti and I've loaded it with a weight. Um, and what you can do for your students is to get them to look at how many pieces of of spaghetti um, can hold a certain mass. Okay, so what we're going to do to mimic the bone loss is that we're going to remove more of this spaghetti. So this is the longer and longer they are in space, the more um, they will lose some of their bone mass. So you'll be able to see as I move, remove pieces of spaghetti from here, that it becomes more and more under tension and eventually will break. And uh, I think we're now going to move on to our next activity, which is, oh, are we going to take a question? No. Okay. 
Oh, if you've got any questions, please do send them in. Uh, as I say, we can answer them live. Uh, Alex will let will pass them on to us. So please do ask away. Our next activity is related to the hydration station activity. Um, in the activity on the website, students make different coloured samples of pretend urine using food colouring. In this extension, we're using tea, fruit juice and water to make our different samples. A key part of the life support system on the International Space Station involves recycling water. This means for an astronaut, this morning's coffee could become this evening's cup of tea. Among some of the methods, the space station uses a system of filtration and phase change, so changing water from liquid to gas and back again, to purify the water. In this investigation, we will look at how you can change your pretend urine back to pure water. Okay, so here are some of the urine samples we've made up from um, very hydrated urine. Uh, just to reiterate, these are made from apple juice and tea. Um, all the way through to very dark. Oops, sorry, I'll make sure you can see them. In the pack, um, there is a colour chart, so you can use these to match and see how hydrated or otherwise the astronauts are. Um, for this one, if it looked like that, then it recommends that they see uh, because it may indicate blood in urine or kidneys quite a problem for an astronaut. Um, there's an activity in the pack which involves the children keeping a diary of their own urine um, by looking at its colour in the morning and uh, checking against the chart and seeing how well hydrated they are. So you can use that for the check that they're drinking enough water. Here you can see um, this is a setup of something called a solar still and it's a very simple setup. It's in a transparent uh, plastic aquarium with some cling film stretched across the top and the cling film simply has a ball bearing in the middle of it just to make a depression. We've been heating the water by shining a desk lamp onto it um, because it's February. If you're doing this at a sunnier time of year you could just leave it on the window so and in fact this is a similar setup it can be used for uh, obtaining water in very hot places like the deserts. Around the uh, base of the aquarium, you can see we've got some impure water. This is just water that's had some green food colouring added to it. The idea is that the water evaporates and then it condenses back on the cling film across the top and it runs towards a depression and drips back down into the bowl so that in the bowl you end up with pure drinkable water. So the green colour to show that uh, it's impure and hopefully you can see and um, that the water in the bowl is transparent. Okay, we've got a couple of questions that have come through. So, one of the, the first ones from Cedar would trust, why do bones change in space? Okay, so that's a good question. So, when astronauts go to the International Space Station, they obviously, when they're in free fall, they will float around um, and they're not having the same pressure on their bones as they would when they're on the earth because when you stand up, you're constantly putting pressure on your legs and your hip bones. Bones are a living tissue, so they will uh, change as there's uh, different loading on them. So when they're in space, the bones will start to deteriorate, as in when you get old and, and you get osteoporosis, the bones weaken um, and that's why they're more likely to get their bones uh, changing so how brittle do they get okay so the the actual percentage bone losses that you kind of get are of the order it depends which bit of the body you're looking at but maybe six or seven percent over a long duration mission which is six months um, if they didn't do the uh, two hours a day training that they do exercising on board resistance exercising which is very important and um, then that bone loss would would be worse so um, what they need to look at um, is for even longer dur duration missions, thinking about going to Mars and things like that, can we maintain that bone mass um, so that they don't weaken too much? So that the, the brittleness of it is really to do with the fact that you're losing some of that bone. 
So we'll move on to the next set of steps for those questions. This one um, is related to the energy of the astronaut activity. So on the International Space Station, as on Earth, it's very important for us to have a balanced diet. And this activity is an extension to the energy of the astronaut activity from the Mission X website. And what we've got is some packets of, uh, or cans of sugary food or drink. So I've got um, a packet of fruit pastels, um, Coca-Cola and Mars. Okay, and what we've also done is bought some sugar cubes. Now each one of those cubes has four grams of sugar in it, so it says so on the, on the packet when you buy it. And all we've done is looked at the nutrition information that you get on the packets as to how much sugar is in each of these. And to count out um, the number of sugar cubes we need to make up that amount of sugar in that uh, drink or food. So you can get your students to obviously do some calculations to work out how many cubes they need. You can also get them to plot sugar cube graphs as we've got here. So you can, you can use different food types um, to do that. Okay, and each one of these, as I said, will have a mass of about four grams. So, uh, I think we've got another question coming in, have okay. we? So Chloe, age eight, asks, are astronauts at risk of becoming dehydrated on the ISS if there is not enough fluid to drink? Well, the ISS is mostly uh, what's called a closed system. So the um, water that leaves an astronaut's body is recycled and stored and given back to the astronauts. Uh, they do have to replenish that. They have to fly water up in rockets. Obviously, it's a very expensive thing to do. Um, I've heard figures around about $9,000 a kilogram of, uh, of moving things into space. So clearly, the more water that they can recycle, uh, the better. However, you do lose some, um, and certain parts of the space station are better equipped for recycling water than others. Uh, of course, just like anybody, uh, there's the risk of dehydration, but no really, no more or no less uh, than anybody else. Okay, the next activity we're going to take a look at is related to the base station walk back. Um, activity. We'll be sending 50 randomly chosen Mission X schools uh, a micro bit with a battery pack uh, and the stepometer program uh, pre programmed in. Okay, if you're not really sure what a micro bit is, you haven't seen one or played with them, uh, I like them a lot. They were a BBC um, project with lots of other organisations um, that sent out to all 11, 12 year olds in the UK. Uh, one of the small programmable devices. They're very easy to program and they have some sensors on board which make them quite useful for doing um, some basic science with. And because they can run from a battery pack, you can take them out and about. So this activity uh, uses an accelerometer in a micro bit and hopefully it can work. Uh, and it should be able to count how many steps somebody has done. Brilliant. Um, if you combine this with a measurement of a, a child's average stride length, uh, then you can use that to work out approximately how far they've walked in a day. Uh, a good way to work out average stride length is not to measure one stride, but to measure many, say 10, and then divide that by the number of strides taken, and that will ha hopefully reduce the error that you get in uh, any variation of strides. It's very hard to walk normally for one stride. It's a lot easier to walk normally for 10 strides. So, um, yeah. We'll be posting instructions for this activity on the UK Mission X website. Um, they're not quite there yet, but they will be soon. Okay, so the, if we've got little questions at the moment, the, the last activity that we're going to go show you is um, called Taste in Space. Uh, you'll notice on the on Mission X website there is a version of this where um, there's an astronaut trying different foods in space. The context of this activity is that when you're on the International Space Station, fluid shifts within the body will cause um, it, you to have more liquid in the upper half of your body than you would normally call it puffy face syndrome. And this causes your um, nasal cavity to become blocked, and don't worry, they've got the food here. 
Um, he doesn't know what it is yet. Um, <laughs> and you won't be able to smell or taste as well as you can when you're on the ground. So I'm going to give Dave um, a blindfold and he's going to hold his nose. And I've got various foods and he doesn't know what these are. And we're going to feed him these foods and we'll see if he can work out what they are. So if you hold your nose, Dave. And here comes the first one. Just close your mouth and a teaspoon. It doesn't seem that impressed with that one. Any ideas? Peanut butter. Okay, first one's peanut butter. I'm not going to tell Dave what it is yet, but I'm just going to hold that up and put that down. So we'll tell you at the end. Here is. It doesn't taste as peanut butter should taste if it is peanut butter. <laughs> So here's number two. In now. <laughs> um. Okay. Number two. Right. Just You're not just going to think we five different types of things and put it on the top. No. Well, I did check with Dave that he wasn't allergic. <laughs> Peanuts are not normally the best thing for you. Right, here's you look at them to refresh your palate, don't you? Here's number three. <laughs> I don't know if you got much of that. It tastes like Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> so that's number three. I don't know if you can see it. I will let you explain. If you can't see on the video, we'll explain if they are afterwards. Oh, me, please. Yeah. Number four, I'm just pairing. Right, here it comes. <laughs> uh. <laughs> is that... Was that lemon juice? That, is, that, that one. <laughs> and the final one... Slightly different uh, texture this time, open up. Oh, I've got that. A biscuit. Any, any idea what? Type of biscuit um, might be good. Is it a caramel hot knob? Other okay. parts are available. I'm fine actually. I forget that one out. So I'll explain to the viewers what it is. So you can take you can take off your blindfold now. So that the first one that you thought was peanut butter was in fact chocolate. Oh, okay. The uh, second one that you thought was peanut butter was peanut butter. The third one was honey, which um, kind of was wet sugar. <laughs> <laughs> the fourth, you were close to this, that was lime juice rather so, than lemon juice. Yeah. Uh, and these were ginger, I mean, they were ginger crunch cookies. So you've got, you know, well, thanks for this purchasing high quality ingredients. Yeah. Um, so you can see it wasn't, you know, it's difficult to know. It might be that if you, if you had your nasal cavities working, that you might have found that these were slightly easier to get. Chloe is doing the live, it's fun, excellent. <laughs> Good to hear. And she also asks, how long after astronauts have returned to Earth will their taste buds return to normal? Uh, pretty quickly, um, because it's all to do with this, like I said, the fluid shifts within the body. Uh, it normally takes them a couple of days to kind of um, acclimatize back to Earth as well. Um, and, uh, they, they do, when they're on the space station, they like to eat spicy foods quite often because it's the kind of things, if, if you haven't got a blocked nose, you'll know you want something with a bit of flavour so that you can actually taste it. Um, so, uh, yes, it's something that they, they really like to have interesting food, unusual food when they're out in space to taste. Um, so, that was the end of the activities that we're going to show you today. Um, we will make this video available again tomorrow um, with some links on it back to the, the Mission X website for the, for the activities that you can do from there. These were, a lot of these were kind of extensions to the current activities. We'll just check if there are any final questions. I think we may have covered them all. No. And you can continue to use the chat function, continue to ask questions um, on the YouTube clip. Um, if you had a problem we didn't mention that you do need to be able to log in to uh, use your Google account. So, um, if you haven't managed to do that, then you can uh, 
submit questions like that, or you can even tweet them uh, to at STEM Learning UK, uh, and we will try and respond through that way. Okay. So, goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>